guys, how are you? This is your favorite YouTuber, Shibomi. So, it's been a long time that I've spoken in front of a camera like this. I got back from Colombia to Korea like in March, uh, but then I had a lot of work to do as well. So, yeah, just until recently, I've been posting videos from Colombia. But this time, I decided to share some tips. So, a lot of you guys have asked me on Instagram and YouTube to share some tips on how to learn foreign languages better. As you guys know, I am Korean. I was born and raised in Korea, so I speak Korean as a mother tongue. And I speak English on a native level like this. And I also speak Spanish as you have watched in my Spanish videos. And I speak Chinese and Tiswahili on a more conversational level as well. So in total, I speak five different languages. So yeah, this time I decided to share these tips. In a broader term, I will be first talking about um, the mindset that you need to have when you learn foreign languages. And the second part will be like some cliche, boring kind of tips, but that are still very helpful in learning languages. And lastly, I'll be sharing like some fun ways that you can do on a daily basis. So first of all, let me start with the mindset. Whenever I started learning a foreign language, I consider myself from that country. So learning a language is not just about like learning pronunciation or how to write the letters. It's about being that person of that country. Do you know what I mean? So let me just explain. Like I think, yeah, learning a language should be also like acting. Once you decide to learn a language, just try to observe the people who speak their language as a mother tongue. How they speak, their gestures, their expressions, their um, tone of voice. Or even if this really helps you, you can um, try to look like them as well. Like your style, your makeup, your hairstyle, whatever. If that helps you. So that was my basic mindset whenever I learned a language. So until now, I have been able to trick some American people and Spanish people that I was from their countries. Uh, not just by my look, but my actual way of talking. After some time of conversation, they asked me like, where are you from? And they would like assume that I was from their country. But turns out I'm from South Korea. So this should be your goal too. Another mindset you should have when you learn a language is you need to keep questioning. So a lot of you guys, when you learn a language, you might get embarrassed or you might get disappointed. Like whenever you don't know something, whenever you have a question. But this should be a moment that you should be really proud of. Once you stop having curiosity, that's when you're dead. As long as you're learning something, you're still alive. That means your brain is working really hard. Your eyes are like glittering with desire to learn more about this world and about the language in this case. As you learn a language, you will have moments of doubt like, oh, why am I so dumb? Like, how come I don't even know this? But don't be frustrated. You are on the right path. And don't forget, like when you have a question, just look it up on Google or any type of dictionary. And if you know a person who speaks that language as a mother tongue or just on a native level, ask them until you have the answer, until you understand it. The last mindset I would like to share with you is to see this language as a life skill rather than a subject to study. I think this happens with a lot of Korean people especially, uh, maybe because of the Korean education system whatsoever. But because they consider a foreign language as a subject to study for the exams only, they are not interested and they give up so easily. But when you think about it, like we speak our mother tongue perfectly because it's our life skill. When you can't speak a language or just like when you can't speak in general, um. You can't order chicken, and you can't order chicken, and you can't order chicken. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, so like speaking is your life skill to express your thoughts and opinions or requests. So that's how you learn your mother tongue. 
And that's how it should be with foreign languages too. Knowing how to speak at least one foreign language is just a crucial life skill now. From just being able to travel around the world, to making friends from other countries, and like having deeper conversation with them, and even to working in the country where they speak that language. So please remember, a foreign language is not a subject to study for the exams anymore. It's more of a life skill in this global world. Okay, now you're ready with the mindset to learn languages, right? This time, let's jump into the actual ways to learn a foreign language. The first tip is study for the proficiency test. So previously, I was mentioning like, okay, a foreign language is not a subject to study for the exam, but I'm now saying that uh, you need to study for the exam. Well, I'm saying that these exams also should be considered as a test to test your life skills too. So let me see. Well, for me, TOEFL was a great way to learn English on a more advanced level. And remember, when you choose a proficiency test, pick something that you can study all four different skills, listening, um, reading, speaking, and writing. You don't want to just grow your listening skill or only reading skill. You want to improve your language skill on a more holistic level. So to give you some tips to study for these tests, for listening, I think shadowing was really helpful for me. Shadowing is literally uh, you becoming a shadow of that person speaking. So when I listen to the listening passage, I'll be like maybe one second behind the speaker and just imitate the speaker. You know, like pronunciation, intonation, tone of voice, and speed. For reading, I set the timer and always try to finish reading the passage in that amount of time. And if I had some words that I didn't know, I just uh, highlighted them and later after reading the passage, I went back to it and um, just looked up the dictionary and find the meaning uh, that's proper in the context. And this was also very helpful for me. If you could like write down on a note what you got wrong on the test and explain the reasons why this should be the answer. That's really helpful because you get to understand your weak points. And for anything, understanding your weak points is a way to get better. For any type of test, time is always really important. Uh, even for speaking and writing, I try to speak or write my thoughts and opinions within that time uh, with a more advanced level of vocabularies and in a proper structure. Another boring way to do that I don't think is boring is to write a journal or diary. I write a journal like every night before I go to bed and seriously, nothing could help relieve your stress better than this. Just writing out your thoughts on a note about, about your day, like about the things that you're grateful for or about the, the problems that you have. And like once you write them out, there's actually a great possibility that these problems will be gone after you write them. But my point is to write the journal in the foreign language that you're learning. So in my case, when I was learning English, I wrote my journal in English. And when I lived in Spain and was learning Spanish, I was writing my journal in Spanish. And there are moments where you don't know the word for what you want to say in that language. In that case, you can just like write the meaning of the word, uh, although it gets long. Or in the worst case scenario, you can just write your mother tongue word just for that word. And after you finish writing the diary or when you wake up the next day, if you still have that itchy feeling that you want to know that word in that language, that's when you have to look up the dictionary. And once you do that, for me, I personally feel like I decode something. And once you scratch up this itchy part, you will feel good, but at the same time, you will remember this word like for a long time, forever. So yeah, every night, why not write a journal in that language? Later on, you will actually realize you've improved a lot. 
Another boring yet helpful way is to read a book in that language. As I told you, learning a language is like becoming a person of that country. So in what language does a person read in their language? But this time, it's not just any book, but I recommend reading a book that you wanted to read even in your mother tongue. That way you will understand the context of the book and have interest in keeping reading the book. However long it might take, just take your time and highlight every word and expression that you don't know uh, so that you can look it up later. And also like any phrases and sentences that you really resonate with. If the original language of a book is either English or Spanish, I try to read that original version in English or Spanish. So this is a book that I was reading when I was learning Spanish. Well, it's the famous Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. And in Spanish, it's called El Alquimista. So like when, when you look at this, I read the book highlighting like basically everything. They're like basically vocabulary words, expressions, phrases, idioms that I don't understand or that I see for the first time. Yeah, and I just underlined like some sentences that I really liked so I can just come back and read later on to have the same impact on my heart. And I think this is really cool. Like when you come back to the phrase that you didn't understand at first, um, after looking up the dictionary and finally understand the phrase, like you get to understand not just the sentence but actually understand what the author tried to say and the wisdom that you could get from the book. So yeah, so I love reading this book, uh, The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho, even in Spanish. Okay, now let me just mention several ways that are fun and you can do on a daily basis. First of all, use the social media. For example, my Instagram feed is filled with like influencers, news accounts, humor accounts from all over the world. From American fashion bloggers, uh, to Colombian singers, to Tanzanian comedians. When they make a post or a story in their language, first of all, they are eye-catching, they are fun, but at the same time, you get to learn the trend of the country. Uh, especially when it comes to humor accounts, I highly recommend this because in each country, depending on their culture or history, there are so much new ones that you need to understand to understand humor. So the humor accounts that I love uh, in English, for example, are 9gag, Fakturi, <laughs> Daquan, and Korean humor accounts that I love are Bestie Moon, Say Moon, and May Moon. Um, they're actually run by one single person. And Luna. And the Spanish humor accounts that I love are Gabronazzi and We Are Me Too. And there are actually many more accounts that I follow, which you should follow and have a look as well. So I will maybe um, make a video about that or simply just leave them in the description box section as well. Another fun way to improve your foreign language skill is to translate everything that you say on your social media. So yeah, it's another way to utilize social media. For example, on my Instagram account and my YouTube channel, I make sure to translate what I say in three different languages, Korean, English, and Spanish, because I simply desire to communicate with people from these countries and I want them to understand me. They're all my friends, basically. So I recommend you do this too for your global friends and for the sake of yourself as well to improve your foreign language. Well, it's true. It might take some time for you to translate everything. For me even, uh, when I translate the captions and subtitles, I have to always look up the dictionary to make sure that what I say is correct in the language. But after all, it's all worth it. Try it. The third fun way to learn a foreign language is to listen to the country's music and sing to it too. For example, I like listening to reggaeton to dance to. So I just simply look up 
Colombia 2018 on YouTube. Then you know what? There are tons of playlists that play the songs that have been viral in Colombia and they will be in Spanish. So I listen to them, I enjoy them whenever I take a shower or whenever I do makeup, whatever. And if I really enjoy that one song, I just look up the lyric, try to sing to it. And I gotta admit, like a lot of times, it really feels like a tongue twister. Like, especially when it comes to those rap songs, like Spanish rap songs. Oh my gosh, like it's really hard to catch up with them. But once you familiarize yourself with those songs and when you hear those songs in the club or just on the street wherever, that's the best feeling ever because you can actually sing to it and dance to it too at the same time. way that I don't really use but a lot of people use is to watch the drama and movies of that country. Think about Netflix. To learn a language, there is no better era than ours. If you find a movie or a drama that you really really love so you want to watch it like two times, three times, I recommend doing the shadowing again. Like I mentioned with studying for TOEFL or just like language proficiency tests of your language. Try to shadow the actor's voice, pronunciation, and even the facial expression, and the speed of talking. Like everything, just try to shadow them. But the best of all when you learn a language is to make friends. But here's one point I want to emphasize. When you meet someone from the country that you're learning the language of, don't consider them as foreigner or someone that you need to learn a language from, don't frame them as something like that. Rather, just look at them as friends. We're all humans, we're all the same. And in the middle of the conversation, there must be something that you don't understand from what the person is talking, or some words that you want to say but don't know what. In that case, just ask them. They're like trying to learn their language to communicate better with them. So they'll be more than happy to teach you those words, expressions, whatever, whatever question you ask. So don't be shy, don't be embarrassed, and ask them. And just be friends with them. Wow, there are so many tips that I wanted to share. Like I did not know I had this many tips. But seriously, if I can dive deeper down, I can just make a whole book of this. Um, these days, I'm also working on blogs in different languages too. So I'll leave the links in the description section. So please check them out as well. Okay, if you have any questions about what I said, or anything in general about me, about whatever, please leave them in the comments or you can just message me on Instagram as well. I'm always open to talk with you guys. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you thought it was really helpful, please feel free to share the video on your social media. Okay, that's it for today and see you guys later.